Hello everyone and happy 13th day of Pride Month. <laughs> We're back. Um, the day is sunny outside and mm. it's a little too hot and it's still <laughs> we're still in isolation trying to figure out what's going on with um covid increases and decreases and what the appropriate measures are who really knows <laughs> so we're here stuck inside i hope that you are doing something fun today um but yeah we're back yeah and today we decided to uh jump to the conclusion of transfigured susan's going to share a little bit about it with you today we maybe just the beginning of that that portion of the book, which I love, um, just to kind of remind us of some important truths. Okay. So it starts out with something important. God loves you. Mm. <laughs> the most important thing. God created you in all your unique beauty, knows you to the breadth of your being, and loves you to your very core. No part of you is hidden from God's sight. No emotion, no desire for change, no shame or sorrow, God sees it all and loves you. Nothing can separate you from that love. No word of scripture, no condemnation by religious, uh, religious authorities, no decision to con confirm your body's gender surgically, nothing. Hmm. <laughs> so, we're just gonna kind of share a little bit about our week with you, with those truths in mind. We. Uh, had kind of an interesting week. We went on a picnic with masks on, uh, sat far away from everybody so that we could enjoy our picnic together. We hugged our grandchildren for the first time in about five months with masks on. Um, we're being very careful. We're, we're uh, in that age group. Uh, so it's been an interesting week for us. We've tried to participate and help and, and lead our voices and our platforms to <coughs> the situations going on around us today. Um, but it, it really hits home in, in really small ways of the uniqueness of being a queer couple in a country where it's not safe or comfortable everywhere still, where churches still deny us the ability to marry, or they will not marry us, or they will not ordain us, some churches, um, more churches than less right now. But, it, you know, it's, it is changing. I mean, we were at the park this week, and we sat down on a bench, and... I just had a desire to reach over and kiss my beloved and unlike a heterosexual couple had to look around to see were we safe was it okay to give her a simple kiss so I mean that seems like a really tiny thing in comparison to what's going on right now but being that it's pride month it's really on our mind what we can do and can't do because like when we went to San Francisco pride last year it was an experience of just being us around a whole bunch of people being free to be them and we marched in the parade and it was so joy filled and I know a lot of people are missing out on that. <clears throat> you have any thoughts on that love? On the pride thing or the whole? The whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> Let's see how yeah. fast you cover the whole thing. So <laughs> it's interesting to you know when we first became a couple and we moved to New England and we ended up being in this beautiful small town where uh, it was very welcoming, very affirming, but we didn't know. And this is the first time we were kind of living out as a couple. Um, and so we went to the movies and we just wanted to hold our hands in this tiny little um, independent theater, just a, a, this tiny, beautiful little theater. Mm. And we were very uncomfortable um, because we didn't know. And, it, you know, after living there for a couple of years, we realized um, our fears were not warranted in that space. Um, now we live in Missouri. Mm. Um, we're outside of a, a pretty big city, uh, and the farther you get out, the more conservative people's views seem to be, um, the more rebel flags you might see. We don't see a lot around here, but once in a while. So, um, you know, someplace like a public park, there weren't a lot of people that day that we were there, and it still, um, made us both think about, is it, is it safe? And we do have to assess that. Um, so it's kind of a stark contrast, um, as you were saying, Dolce, uh, between last year, last June, and it, it was our first Pride Parade, and it was in San Francisco, so it was kind of amazing to have that experience be the first Pride experience. Um, and it was so joyful to be just there, and you know, get, getting a kiss was no big deal. Um, but we're each called, you know, we, we know that we are called to be living here in this place where we are now. Um, 
and sometimes we're called to places we don't want to be sometimes we're stuck in places we don't want to be but God uses us uses us um, in those circumstances in those places and times um, and we have, sometimes you have to look for what that means and um, how how uh, how we can most shine God's light in, in those spaces sometimes small ways uh, sometimes it has to be underground and, and from the position of a closet, you know, writing letters and voting and um, cheering people on uh, through anonymous accounts on Twitter. Um, there's all different ways. And sometimes it's more active and public mm -hmm. and, you know, you can, you can fly a rainbow flag outside mm -hmm. your house and you can, you know, wear pride shirts. Um, and you can protest on streets. So whatever you're doing, uh, it, just keep doing and keep shining and keep remembering that nothing you can do can separate you from the love of God and that you are loved. Um, anything else? Oh, and, and try really hard to be there for each other. I mean, mm -hmm. one of my the feelings that have hurt me this week in my heart deeply are, are a lot of young people who have gone home from college who are going home to families that aren't accepting of who they are or that have left the dorms or could be living homeless right now because of that situation. If you know anybody who is younger or, or even older that needs some kind of connection, try to connect. Even if it's just a phone call, even if it's a card in the mail, something to help somebody else. We, we are blessed to have each other, you know, in this time and we do celebrate our love and we celebrate pride and we fight for and advocate for things to be better in the world, but we get to do that together. So if you know of somebody who is alone in that experience right now during Pride, maybe missing their first Pride, um, please reach out. The world needs you. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Um, I wanted to read this a quote. So we had a couple of, of passages. One was um, from First Peter chapter 2 and talks about um, us all being, you know, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own, so that we may announce the praises of God who called us out of darkness mm -hmm. into a wonderful light. Amen. Um, so if you are unchurched, um, mm -hmm. because of any number of reasons, your own deconstruction or um, not feeling welcome in a church because of your orientation or your gender identity or for any other reason, know that uh, you are a royal priesthood. You are um, God's church walking around God's holy space. Um, and then there's a, another quote that I wanted to close with. Um, and this part of it may sound hard, but I think it's powerful and important. Um, do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger people. Do not pray for tasks equal to your power. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Then the doing of your work shall be no miracle, but you yourself shall be a miracle. Every day you shall wonder at yourself, at the richness of life which has come to you by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So there's no harm and no um, weakness in praying that bad situations can change. Um, and we need to do that, but also, uh, God can do a lot through you in um, shining love um, while difficult situations are unfolding. Mm -hmm. So so you are the royal priesthood. Now go out and, go and be love. Okay? <laughs> we love you. We love you. Take care.